Greetings everyone and welcome to my review of the Transformers Robot Enhanced Design or RED Soundwave. So I've been really looking forward to this for a good while. I have been kind of putting it off getting it. It's been in my pulse basket for a very long time and then I happened to come across it in The Entertainer. So I had to pick it up. It's the red figure I've been looking for for the longest time and uh I'm I'm just very excited. So I don't usually go over packaging, but I do just want to go over something. Obviously, you have the main figure at the front here, but you do actually have a little side window that shows all the accessories. And I really like that. Like, I know it's not really the most smart thing. I didn't actually until I brought this back. I didn't even realize that was a thing. I literally I got home with it and I was like, oh, it has a side window. That's interesting. So, I don't know how how effective it actually is, but I do really just like that feature, and, uh, yeah, anyway, let's just open it up and get into the figure. And just before the figure, I just want to kind of point out, you can't quite see it from the packaging, so it's only when you open it that you actually see it, but there's a nice, nice little, I guess, grey print rather than blue print of, uh, of the figure. And the accessories and stuff, I like it, I like it. I actually, I, I kind of want to frame this one, like cut the sides off and frame this. This is really nice. And finally getting Soundwave out of the box and... Oh my, this is possibly my favourite figure of all time. And I think I say that pretty regularly, especially when I'm talking about Marvel Legends, but... This is perfect to me. And... I know there's masterclass and stuff which are like so much more accurate and stuff like that, but this is my mind's eye of what Soundwave should look like. Just down to the colours, down to how the cassette tray is, the shoulder mounted cannon, everything. It's just it's just kind of perfect. Now, just going over some of the more um, small features, you've got full painted um I guess vents on the knees. The little bits of red around there's the back back which is not painted unfortunately but does have some nice molding to it overall looks pretty good and uh yeah really nice print i suppose it is like actually embossed there it's like it's 3d effect on the uh decepticon logo i really do like that i really wish the buttons were pressable that would make it perfect but you do actually have a uh opening chest piece so I guess that's pretty cool. I am kind of weirded out by the fact that these are very normal hands. Like, they're very human hands. I, I think it's just because I'm so used to Siege and having, like, the squared off hands. But, yeah, I, I like that. I, I, I'm not I'm not against it. I just think it's a little bit odd. And then that head is just kind of perfect. If I was to have one issue with the overall aesthetic, it is that there's just a weird lack of colour. In terms of the paint and stuff, I'd say the back the backpack piece should be painted. I'd really like for the end of the cannon to be painted. There's just odd little bits where I'm like, shouldn't there be paint there? And I just I may come back to this and do a bit of painting myself just to, you know, add the effects that I want to. But overall, like this is at the very least perfect in terms of the actual aesthetic. The silhouette that it casts is just is exactly what I want out of a sound wave and yeah, let's just get into the articulation. So, first off, I think it's only fair to get it out of the way. First off, uh, that is a bit scratched. But also, this comes off pretty easily. I'm not sure whether it's an issue with mine. Uh, but it doesn't really like to stick in the peg very well. And no matter what I seem to do, it just seems to... As soon as I move it, it just comes out. So, for the time being, that's going to just be left off, off to the side. But you can rotate that... Technically, though, as I say, it does need to come out pretty easily. At the head, you have a ball joint, um, or a dumbbell joint, actually, it might be. I haven't quite been able to figure it out, because it does seem to be uh, pretty movable. But that allows for forward, back, which has actually decent back. If you've got a taller transformer next to him, that works really well. And then a little bit of tilt, which, you know, pretty good. You've got rotation as well, but I don't really need to show that too much. Um, at the torso, there is a rotation, surprisingly, which I didn't actually realise for a good while while I was messing with it. But yeah, you can go all the way around. It's just a regular swivel. That is also... 
I've been messing with this for about 10 minutes and I didn't even realise that came off. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good. No forward or back, unfortunately, but honestly, for the poses I'm going to put him in, I don't think it really matters. At the shoulder, we have hinge and swivel. I mean, it goes all the way out. I can't complain. I just, I kind of want him to go even higher. Because I want him to kind of have that, like, pointing to the sky sort of look. But that's all right. We have double elbow goes... I'm going to call that all the way because I, I think it physically couldn't go any further. But that's pretty good. We also have at the bicep, there is a swivel. Very nice. And then at the wrist, there's actually side to side, which is very tough um, with rotation. And they do come out. So I'm going to actually have a proper look at the system there. Okay, so it's a, it's a peg and a uh, joint. Okay. I don't know why it's so, like, the detents are really tight, but also, like, there's no distinct. There doesn't, there's no click for the detents, so I'm really confused about that. I also can't get that back in now. They are so hard to actually, there we go. They snap into place, at least. Actually, that's not, there we go. There's two snaps, I see. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Right, then, at the legs, we have, oh, wow, that's, oh, okay, well, that's, uh, it's better than some Spider-Man. We have rotation at the uh, at the thigh. That is really worrying. How much that's come out? I might have to heat that and pop that back in. Hmm. I'm not. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, we have double knee, which I can't seem to move the. Uh, hmm. I moved it before. I can't seem to move the uh, the top part of that. Can I move it on this one? There we go. So that goes. I mean that goes. Further than you'd ever need it to, let's be honest. I don't know why on that on that leg it's not doing it. I feel like I'm going to snap that peg, so I don't really want to uh, to push it too far, but... Ayo. Um, and then at the ankle, there's... I guess a ball joint? Hinge and swivel looking thing? I don't really know. You get a bit of forward, a bit of back, a bit of... Uh, I almost want to say that's forward-facing pin, but I, I can't quite tell. That's a really weird ankle. Um, I'm actually really not sure what that's supposed to be. Um, but yeah. I mean, other than my uh, QC issues that I'm seeming to have, I, I think the articulation is actually really good on this. I, I can't get over the fact that this knee just won't move. I don't want to snap this peg. That's the thing, it just, it just like... It won't move at all. I might have to heat that. That's That's kind of unfortunate. But, yeah, I suppose that, that, that's something to solve. Oh, wow. Yeah. Standing isn't the easiest thing either. The more I move this figure, the worse it's getting, and I'm really disappointed already. But getting into accessories, we do have the shoulder-mounted cannon, which does have a little peg on the back as well, which is quite interesting. But, yeah, just pegs on, and as I say, it doesn't seem to want to stay very well, which I'm not sure if that's, like missing part of the peg or something but it goes on it works it's fine i'm just probably never going to touch it once i've got it to the position i want it and then there is also what i've already shown is the backpack which as i say could do with some paint maybe some orange on the vent there but overall i quite like it and uh, that just fits onto the back like so very nice you also get a trigger finger hand which I don't think can hold anything, but I think it's more for uh, use with pressing the button, which I will put it in a pose in a second. And then you also get an actual gun holding hand, which also has trigger finger. The issue with all these hands, they're all sideways pin, meaning that even this is a gun holding hand, it doesn't go up, it only goes sideways with those ridiculously tight detents. I'm really concerned about how tight some of the articulation is. I, I, I'm going to have to just heat everything, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but that hand does go with the blaster. Very G1 inspired. I like this a lot. My favourite part of the Siege figure was the fact it came with a classic style weapon. And uh, I haven't actually tried to fit this in yet. So I don't really know how this goes in. Apparently it just doesn't. Um, okay, that's that's a bit interesting. How does this even fit in? Because the the, the bottom of the... Of the grip is actually wider than the top opening. Give me a second and I'll figure it out. 
Well, I went away and just heated it up. I have kind of bent the handle a little bit to get it in, but once in, it fits. I'm never going to take it out because there's no reason to. There's no weapons. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm I love the aesthetic of this figure and it's annoying me that so much seems to just be difficult to work with and I don't really know why. I d anyway, final accessory, we do get a Ravage, um, not Ravage, a laser beak, sorry, uh, as a cassette and that just, as I showed earlier, you can just open up the um, chest and that looks pretty good. I'm probably going to leave it like that. I don't really need Laserbeak's cassette to be out. I suppose you could probably find a way for him to hold it with this hand, potentially, but yeah, that's going to probably just stay like that. I've just realised that it appears that his, his right leg, this leg, seems to be shorter than his left. I'm not sure why. Oh, wait. That... Oh, great. I, this thing is the most annoying part of this figure, but I think there's actually more gap on this joint. Just ever so slightly more, and I think that's why this one won't move. I'm going to have to heat this at some point. But yeah, he doesn't want to stand up quite quite straight. Um, this is really disappointing. This is uh, Marvel Select Venom levels are disappointing to me on just not being able to stand him properly. And so, for comparisons, we have um, Wolf Cybertron, Trilogy, Siege, Cybertron, Cybertron? <laughs> I don't know how I messed that up. Soundwave, um, it's for the longest time been my favourite Soundwave, and um, aesthetically, I think I prefer the new Red, but this doesn't fall apart when I play with it, though I will admit the reason why there's no um, shoulder cannon on him is because I just put it on his backpack because I couldn't be bothered to knock it off. Because, I will admit, that seems to be a weak point with Soundwave in general. And then, anyway, just for another comparison, it's the only other uh, uh, Transformer I actually keep on the shelf. I think it's... Is it Twin Twister? Something like that. It's one of the um, one, of the, one of the weird Transformer cons or something like that. But, I, I'm fine with this. He is a little bit shorter than Siege, but he is considerably taller than a G2. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm fine with this. I'm, I'm not against it by any means, but I, I don't know. I'm... I'm very mixed on this figure overall. And then for mixed display comparison, we have the Black Series First Edition Battle Damage Stormtrooper and the Marvel Legends Venom Wave. Um, what was it? Venom Pool? Venom Pool Carnage. I, uh, I'm fine with this. I, I, I don't mind Transformers being shorter than most other waves. That's fine by me. And overall, I'm kind of disappointed. In this figure, something that I found out while I was posing it like this, he can't, because of his hinge in his hand, can't actually press the button, which is something that even the Siege Soundwave can do. Also, I got him in this position, and now I can't stand him back up in it. That's just great. Um, But yeah, overall, this is not an action figure. It's a statue pretending to be an action figure, and it looks great, don't get me wrong. The aesthetic is amazing, but the shoulder cannon just falls off whenever it wants to. The joints are ridiculously tight. A bunch of them don't really function the way they should. And then the paints are mediocre at best. I'm going to make this my display sound wave, mostly because if I used it for any other purpose, like I do for Siege, it just wouldn't work. I can't use this as a comparison piece like I do with Siege because of all the issues with it. I love the accuracy. It looks like G1 star Soundwave. I'm going to keep saying other things because my brain is just... I'm, I'm Honestly, I'm just in kind of shock at how bad this figure ended up being. I definitely need to heat up some joints, loosen some stuff, just kind of work at it. I'm probably going to super glue the uh, shoulder cannon in place. Because I can't be bothered to fix it every 10 seconds. I had to fix it twice while getting this pose. And yeah, overall, if you're someone who collects red, you probably already know some of these QC issues, so you know what to expect. I may have just got a really bad example. That's definitely possible. I don't own any other red. So that is always a thing. Um, I've been pretty lucky with my Siege and my other lines. So 
maybe red was just my unlucky day, you know, it was the streak being broken, but yeah, that's going to be it for this video. So if you enjoyed the review, like it, subscribe if you're around here. I make videos every Tuesday and Friday, and if you subscribe and ring that bell, you'll see them every time I upload them. But otherwise, that's going to be it for this video, and uh, yeah, bye! <laughs>